It's really nice to be here. It's kind of a bit intimidating following Howard because some of the things that he said were things that I was going to say, which is a bit annoying, really. Um, but I'll, I'll just soldier on. Now, it's really good to be here. I, I sat on the plane. I'm, I'm from a place called England. You've all heard of that, haven't you? <laughs> Sure. And um, I, I speak all over the place. Our, our company, we launched our company last year and we, we we're in, it's a kind of multimedia music education resource. And our website is probably the best music education website in the world for elementary students. There's now 50,000 students on it and we're adding 1,000 every week. And we're in 47 states in the US with our DVD program and in seven countries in about 15 months. So we're doing quite well. And I'm actually the face of the brand, would you believe? So that's that's why I'm looking slightly strange up on that picture. So I'm in more normal mode today. I did sit on the plane and a lady said to me, um, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to Chicago, because that's where the plane was going. And she <laughs> said, <laughs> slightly strange question. And I, she, then, then she said to me, then she said to me, what are you doing? And I said, I'm speaking at a graduation ceremony. And uh, then there was a pause and she said, are you a professor? <laughs> And I really wanted to say yes, but I couldn't, so I'm not a professor, no. So, not to contradict what Howard said, but I am gonna, I, I thought, what can I talk to students, to people about in this room? What could I give you to take away that based on my experiences of life? I didn't want to talk about anybody else's experiences of life because I haven't lived another life, I've only lived my own. And so I thought, what could I talk about? And I thought the most stunning thing that I could talk about, the most interesting thing would be the word, yes. So I thought I would speak about the word yes. Yes is a very interesting word. When I proposed to my wife, um, obviously there was a longer delay than I would have liked. <laughs> and, and she said yes. And then of course, a few years later, she said to me, guess what? And I said, I said what? And she said, I'm, I'm having our first child. And I said, yes, like that. And then a few years later, she said, I'm having our second child. And I said, Yes. <laughs> and then a few years later, she said, I'm having our third child. And I said, no. <laughs> and so, yes is a very important word. And you'll find that yes is a doorway to great opportunities. Yes will take you to the edge. Yes will throw you in at the deep end. Yes is a very, very powerful word, which, which will open up loads and loads of different experiences to you in your life. I was reminded, um, I went, I studied jazz, postgraduate um, jazz studies after I did a classical performance degree. And uh, I also studied the people that play jazz, which is almost as interesting. And um, I remember that at college, the people that played jazz were in two groups. There were those that wanted to play sort of avant-garde jazz. I don't know whether you've ever listened to a lot of avant-garde jazz. It's kind of sounds like you're scratching the back of your nail across a bass guitar while it's on the floor. And so there were some people that, that did that, and I've played it, and it's very interesting to play. But And there were others that would do anything, that would say yes, because they wanted to increase their... They wanted the experience of playing in lots of different styles. And it was a very interesting to see these two groups of people. Those that wouldn't ever do anything else, and those were just focused on wanting to play avant-garde jazz. And I remember one of our lecturers said one day, he said, I was really into avant-garde jazz. And what we did one day, uh, me and a few buddies, we stayed up all night and we listened to the note G. <laughs> and it was the most bizarre sentence I've ever heard. And he said, at about four o'clock in the morning, something came over us. And none of us knew what to say. We were just sort of listening to what he was saying. So there was those that wanted to do avant-garde jazz and those that would do anything. Now, it's interesting that those who decided to say yes to lots of different opportunities were the ones that actually gained more experience and in the long run were able to do the things that they really wanted to do after that. And it struck me that in my experience as a performer, saying yes to lots of different opportunities within the performing realm has been very beneficial to me. If I'd have said no to all the things that I'd been offered, I don't think I would have been the person that I am today. So yes is something that opens up great opportunities. Now, before I could say yes, my mum used to say yes for me and I often would hear her on the phone saying, oh, I think Graham can do that. Oh, yes, he'll do that. And then she'll come and explain to me what I had to do for her. And I remember once she booked me to play at this enormous cub. Any, anybody been a cub scout here? 
don't be don't be embarrassed yeah um so a cub scout jamboree there was like a thousand cub scouts a thousand eight-year-olds all in like green caps and little jumpers and you know those nice little badges and all looking sweet so they're all standing in this enormous room and up on the stage with this big black grand piano which i was supposed to be playing for one song one song so a thousand cub scouts they had all their dib 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 dob dob bob stuff all the woggles on and they had the speeches and the flags and all that and then the big sort of arcala bloke said right okay now we're going to sing a song and so i struck up the song and it was actually the wrong song and a thousand cub scouts turned their heads like that towards me and one of them right from the middle said i think it's the wrong piece <laughs> It was the most embarrassing moment of my life, but I said yes to it. Ye yeses aren't always good experiences, are they? Now, the, the guy that I work for, that I co-created the company with, is a very, very successful businessman. And he started a company called Maximus from his basement, and now it's a nine and a half thousand employee company, and he's quoted on the New York Stock Exchange. Very, very interesting man. And I said to him one day, what makes you successful? And he said, well, I've made more mistakes than anybody else. And it's always stayed with me because yeses can go wrong. But it's what we do with things when they go wrong. What do we do with those mistakes? How do we cope with those mistakes? How do we use those to make sure we're better? Now, I can safely say that I've never, ever since then played the wrong music for a gig ever <laughs> because I learned from that mistake. So how did our company start? Well, our company started because of another yes moment. I was playing um, all over the world as uh, doing like a comedy show, a bit like Victor Borg. Anyone remember Victor Borg? And um, I was playing this cruise ship and in Hong Kong and I had to do two 45 minute shows in two weeks. That was a good gig. <laughs> and I was sitting kind of going through some sea and there was a passenger in one of the lounges playing a grand piano, a bit like that one. And um, he wasn't a very good player, but I quite liked the tune. And I said to him, I went up to him. Well, actually, I thought to myself, should I go and tell him that I like it or should I just let him play? And I thought, well, I'm going to go and tell him. So I said, I really like that piece you're playing. And he said, well, I wrote it myself. And I said, well, OK, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll write it down and I'll perform it in one of my concerts and we'll see what happens so he said great so I downloaded a piece of manuscript paper wrote it down played it in the concert and thought that was it the next day he came up to me with a contract and the contract was to write and arrange all his piano pieces of which he had 50 and he said I'll give you two thousand dollars for each one that you do and I was happy <laughs> about that very happy and I remember calling my wife and I just got married and I said wife listen <laughs> I found out later her name was Sarah. Wife, I said, guess what's happened? And she said, she's American, she said, I don't believe it. And she was like, wow, this is really cool. And she got some, like, she got clothing magazine, she circled the things she wanted. But like all these, all these kind of, when I got home, she had this whole magazine for me with black rings around everything. Anyway, so I thought it was one of those things that would never come to anything because sometimes people make promises, don't they, in life, and you're like, wow, this sounds really good, and nothing comes of it. A month later, a CD dropped on my doormat in England, and it was just this guy playing the piano. And I started, I'd never done any arranging before. I'd, I didn't even have a computer, I didn't have a keyboard, but I said I'd do it. Because when you say yes, you're backing yourself. You're backing your abilities to do it. And some 95% of what he asked me to do, I had no idea how to do it. But yet I said, yes, I'll do it. And I backed myself. Five years later, we'd written a children's album. And he said to somebody, we were sitting together in Nashville somewhere, and he said to this guy, a consult consultant, said to me, they said, how can we make this uh, children's album successful? And the consultant was like, make a TV show. So then David turned to me and said, Graham, let's make a TV show. And I said, yes. <laughs> I had no idea. I'd never been involved in TV. I'd never done anything like that. I didn't know what Final Cut was from another thing that could be funny that I can't think of. Um, I'd never done Final Draft. I'd never done any of these things. But I thought, do you know what? I'm going to say yes. 
I'm going to say yes. And I said yes. And I found out I backed my ability to, to do it, to just do it and work it out. And everyone that I've studied who is successful backs their ability to do something. The guy that I was talking about, who's, who's my boss, he worked with the government to privatise government services. So he won the, the bid to run California's child support programme. Now, in anyone, anyone's book, that is a big job. Did he know how to do it? No, he didn't know how to do it. But did he say he'd do it? Yes, because he backed his ability to do it. And so as you're going out into the big wide world or Chicago, wherever you live, I want you to take this thought away. Back yourself to do stuff. Don't be frightened. You'll always battle fear in your life. Fear will always be something that you're like, can I do it? Can I do it? I'm not sure. Yes, you can. You can do it. You've got a brain. You can do it. And so I want to leave you with that thought that you'll never forget this talk, which is the word. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.